In this video, application engineer Austin Claybrook is going to tell us more about the RPO sequences, rendezvous and proximity operation sequences, that is, in SDK Astrogator, and he's going to go through some specialty sequences here. To start off, we're going to be introducing these RPO specialized sequences uh, with this RPO mission here. So just a little bit of context, we have an RPO satellite in GEO, and it's going to be rendezvousing with another target satellite. Um, to start off, we're actually going to be in the location of this chase satellite. So if I just turn on the chase satellite real quick, we're going to start off in that RPO chase, where that chase is located. Um, we're going to be pretty much exactly where the chase satellite is. And then from there, we're going to set our reference to be the target satellite over there. Uh, and we're just going to coast for an hour to start off our scenario. And then we'll get into each of these sequences. And the sequences we're going to be covering in detail today, if I go to the RPO enter a new sequence, you'll see these RPO specialized subsequences here. Um, so we have the match plane with a single burn. That's when the first sequence are going to go in depth, then the phase change, the stop plane crossing, the stop relative rate, and the stop motion. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so after coasting for one hour, I'm just going to go ahead and set my animation time to the end of that coast sequence right there. You can see there's actually a small cross-track component um, from this chase satellite to the target satellite. So even though they're both geos, their inclination or the RAN um, is slightly different. Um, that's why there's this cross-track component right here. So the first thing we're going to need to be doing is matching the plane with our target satellite. So for this sequence right here, the high-level parameters are the engine name, what engine model would I like to use. I'm just going to accept the default, which is the rendezvous engine, but you can change this for all of these parameters that we're going through today. Uh, who am I? We're going to leave it as RPO, and it's just going to match the name of our satellite right here, the same as it appeared in this object browser. It's really important that this RPO matches the same name that's called in the object browser, uh, because the scripting tool is going to be doing a few things under the hood in order to actually set up some parameters, um, set some references, things like that uh, for our target satellite. So just make sure this is the same. And then for the maneuver type, um, we have a little toggle here between impulsive and finite. Uh, all these sequences are going to work for finite maneuvers as long as they have a reasonable thrust um, associated with them. As long as your finite burns aren't very long, uh, these sequences will work for both impulsive and finite maneuvers. For today, I'm just going to stick to impulsive, uh, but they should work for finite as well. So let's go ahead and expand this RPO plane match uh, sequence right here and see what it's doing. So it's going to propagate for a little while. It's going to propagate to the node crossing of my target. So this is going to be a similar concept to doing a inclination plane change. So if you're if you have an inclination, you want to get rid of it, you know you have to be on the Earth's ascending and descending node at the equator in order to get rid of the inclination. Um, so you have to be in that sort of the equatorial plane to get rid of your inclination. Uh, the same exact concept applies here, uh, but instead of being you know, the node crossing of the Earth, we're going to the plane crossing and the node crossing of our target satellite. So this sequence is going to propagate to the first node crossing. It's going to propagate to the next node crossing, to the second node crossing. Um, and then basically, at that point, check which delta V is lower. So it's going to perform a maneuver at the first one, check the delta V, um, basically propagate, pretend that didn't exist, uh, do another maneuver, check which one is lower, and then choose that for the node crossing. So it'll be the first or the second, depending on whatever delta V is lower to match the plane of our target satellite. And then once we're there, you see that the sequence ends on a maneuver here. And so once it ends on a maneuver, um, it's going to stop the relative motion, or at least the cross-track component, uh, inside that plane. So it's going to just, as the name suggests, match the plane with a target satellite. And you would use this whenever you have a cross-track component and you want to match the plane of your target satellite, as the name suggests. So that's our first sequence. Uh, and if I go ahead and set my animation time to the end of this, uh, you'll see that it did indeed propagate. And it looks like it went to that second node crossing. So the first node crossing would have been when it crossed this plane right here, but it looks like it went to the second one because the delta V was lower, then it went ahead and stopped. Okay, after that, uh, this is our plane change sequence. This is the next one. Uh, sorry, the phase change sequence. This phase change um, requires a couple initial conditions. You need to be in the same, um, the same orbit as your target satellite. So you don't want to be doing this if you're not pretty much on the V-bar, or rather, a true anomaly offset um, of your target satellite. So you want to be in a similar uh, type of orbit as your target satellite. It doesn't have to be circular. In this case, it is. 
But if it was an eccentric orbit, which has an argument of perigee, an orientation to it, um, just make sure you're in that same orbit. And what this sequence is going to do is perform a maneuver to either increase your orbit radius or decrease it and maintain that same eccentricity um, and orientation, the argument of perigee. Um, so you're basically going to drift towards that target satellite, um, either always being beneath it if it goes uh, beneath, if you lower your satellite orbit, or always going to be um, above the target satellite um, if it raises the orbit. So if you're sort of ahead in motion, in this case, um, we are in the geo belt. We're actually ahead of um, our target satellite here. Um, so that affects what direction we go. Uh, we're going to be increasing our orbit radius here. So that will actually cause our orbit period to increase, which means we're going to drift backwards towards the target satellite. Um, so let's go ahead and cover this high level parameter to show how we set that up. So the first right here is the phase angle. That's going to be the angular offset between my target and my RPO satellite. In this case, it's 0 0.02 degrees. I want to get pretty close to my target satellite. So my phase um, is going to be pretty close. Uh, what maneuver type? Impulsive or finite? Same for the engine name. Rendezvous engines can virtually accept the default. Uh, make sure this RPO satellite uh, name right here matches the name of my satellite. So who am I? Uh, the, the the sequence name right here, the phase change. So the phase change, if you have multiple phase changes, just make sure that the current uh, sequence you want to execute matches this. So if I had multiple, you might need to update this name right here to match whatever it's called in your MCS. And then for the drift direction, um, once again, I mentioned we are ahead in orbit. The positive velocity direction is this way to my right. Uh, but I want to go the negative velocity direction this way. Uh, and in order to do that, that's, this target satellite is much closer if I go my minus velocity direction. So that's what we're going to do. And because of that, it's going to say, oh, I need to basically slow down. Um, so it's going to raise the orbit. If I instead had picked the plus velocity direction, it would drop my orbit and um, it would go all the way around the geo belt. It's not what I want, but that's what would happen if I had selected that. And then the max rev is basically how many revolutions until I'm at that target satellite. So in this case, um, one rev is one day because I'm in the geo belt. So that's basically a max of 10 days to get there. So if I increase this number, it might take longer to get to that target satellite, um, but you'll use less delta V. Okay, taking a look at the sequence, so I've already mentioned in order to use this, you want to be in the same orbit with pretty much just a uh, true anomaly offset. Uh, and then from there, it's going to um, propagate just a little bit. Then it's going to start a drift. Um, it's going to stabilize in this higher orbit. So it's going to, again, match the same shape and orientation of the orbit. Uh, keep on drifting until you're near the target. And then from there, it's going to perform a maneuver to lower you into the target orbit and another one to stay there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the end of the sequence. Um, this sequence, as we said, we had a 10 day max. So it took just about 10 days to get over here. And you'll see that I pretty much just increased my orbit into a super synchronous orbit and drifted all the way to my target satellite. And then at the end, I stopped um, near the V-bar of this target satellite. And then if I just go one more hour forward to the coast, um, I'm just going to coast an hour here. Um, and you'll see that there is a small cross-track component uh, to this RPO sequence as I zoom in here. So I coasted for an hour, and there's still a, a small plane offset here that happened during our drift. So the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of that plane crossing. So we're going to introduce the next sequence called the stop plane crossing sequence. Uh, same high-level parameters here of who am I, uh, RPO, engine name, maneuver type. Those are all going to be the same as other sequences. Uh, do I actually want to stop the relative motion when I hit this plane crossing? Uh, in this case, it's going to be true. I actually do want to stop. Um, and on what plane do I want to stop? Um, this is going to be the RI or the radial in-track plane. Um, that's the one I'm thinking of right here. So it's going to stop when I cross the radial in-track plane. I could also change this to be in-track cross-track or cross-track radial uh, this is just going to be used for basically stopping in a plane crossing condition, as the name suggests, which is useful for transitioning between things like R-bar or V-bar, um, things of that nature. And then the plane stopping condition, um, it can be either or increasing or decreasing, either meaning as soon as I cross it, go ahead and stop. Increasing or decreasing allows you to choose, so sort of if I go into the plane, 
Um, it has a uh, plane orbit normal to it. So if I'm increasing in that direction going into it, I can choose a stop. Or I might have to wait until I come back through it uh, and on that decreasing. Um, so it really depends how you enter that plane, but you can specify which condition you want to um, stop on, either increasing or decreasing, or if you don't care, if you hit the plane crossing, just go ahead and stop on either. All right, for the plane crossing, if we take a look, it's going to propagate, and then it's going to do a maneuver to stop if the stop relative motion is true. So it's really, it's really just a propagate sequence um, that already has some of these plane crossings set up in it. Um, and another thing you're going to see with a lot of these sequences are these target sequences, which will go ahead and do things like set the maneuver type um, to be impulsive here. It's going to run a targeter, so these targeters are already set up for you. Um, and if you did select finite, it will go ahead and convert all those maneuvers to finite. So it's not just a propagate sequence. There's a lot more that's going on underneath the hood. Um, but this is all sort of set up for you and to uh, save you time and make these just a little bit easier to use. So if we go to the end of that stop plane crossing, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and propagate for an hour here after the end of that plane crossing, our RPO satellite is going to stop on the RI plane crossing, as you would expect. And since we do have similar force models here, uh, and this V-bar is a stable location, uh, we're just going to stay there even after an hour. We're not going to drift too much. Um, from here, I'm going to do a small delta V. Uh, we're not going to go into this because this is actually in a different subfolder, but we're just going to perform a small delta V here to do a radial sort of hop towards this target satellite. Um, and then from there, uh, this, this delta V only initiates that sequence. Um, we're going to go to the next sequence right here uh, called a stop relative rate. So let me go to the beginning of this sequence just to illustrate what it's going to do. So after doing that radial um, burn that's interested in this hop, I coasted for an hour. Uh, but the next sequence that I have is the stop uh, relative rate. So it's going to continue on this propagation until that stopping condition is met. Uh, in this case, it's going to be when a relative rate is zero. Uh, so going through these high-level parameters over here, same, light, same high-level parameters of who am I, RPO satellite, uh, engine name, maneuver type, um, stop relative motion. Uh, this is going to be, in this case, I'm going to set it to false because I don't want to actually perform the maneuver to stop me. I just want to stop propagating uh, when my rate crossing um, becomes zero. In this case, I specified the in-track rate, um, which would put me closer towards the target satellite on this V-bar over here, which says um, once my in-track rate is zero, not my in-track position, but my in-track rate is zero, I'm going to go ahead and stop. And then... Once again, we have that crossing condition of increasing or decreasing if my rate is increasing and it hits zero, or if it's decreasing when it hits zero. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stop whenever it hits zero for either. Taking a look, once again, you'll notice it propagates unless I have this stop relative motion, in which case it'll also perform a maneuver. So if I go to the end of this sequence, you'll notice that I stop on the V-bar. Uh, but just for illustration purposes, this stop relative motion right here, I didn't actually stop my relative motion, didn't actually run that maneuver sequence because I had set this to be equal to false for the stop relative motion, so that guy didn't get executed. But now we actually have a stop relative motion sequence, and this is the last in that folder, um, which really just does a burn to get rid of all the instantaneous interact radial and cross-check rates. Um, it's really just a burn sequence right here uh, to go ahead and match the same rates as your target. And if I were to jump um, to the end of the sequence. You'll notice in this case it's instantaneous because I have an impulsive maneuver. Uh, and once again, you can pick what engine name you have. Um, we're just going to coast for one hour, and you'll see that I do indeed stay in the same spot because I happen to stop on a stable location and in my relative rates. If you were not in a stable location, such as like the R bar or some other location nearby the target that wasn't on the V bar, uh, you would drift. So it would instantaneously stop the position, but it's not going to try and maintain that spot. Okay, so this is after one hour, it drifted. Um, it's still pretty much the same space, the, the same spot because we're in a stable location. And that is going to wrap up um, this RPO sequence today. Uh, and we're gonna now show one for the RPO specialized R-bar and V-bar sequences. Thanks.